a rematch of last year's semifinals as the Minnesota Lynx welcome the Seattle Storm. Welcome to Target Center in downtown Minneapolis. I'm Sloan Martin along with you. Minnesota is 0-2 to start the year for the first time since 2007. That's when Maya Moore graduated high school. It was Simone Augustus's sophomore season. It's a small sample because the Lynx certainly have dropped two in a row along the way, even during their years winning four titles over seven seasons. But it does demonstrate how rare it is for the Lynx to begin the year without a win at this point in their third game. Most recently, Tuesday, they fell 86-75 to at Barclays Center to the now 3-0 New York Liberty. Sabrina Inescu recorded the first triple-double in team history and became the youngest in the WNBA to notch one, which if you watched her at all at Oregon in her playing days in college, you knew it was just a matter of time, but I don't know if people thought it would be this early before she's even played a full season. She finished against the Lynx with 26 points, 10 rebounds, 12 assists. She really was able to get into this Lynx defense, making difficult passes through those double teams. Sylvia Fowles from Minnesota had her second double-double of the season, going 11 for 17 from the field. She had 26 points. 11 rebounds, a great start for Sylvia Fowles, the 2017 MVP. The rest of the Lynx shot just 30% combined. Now the Storm have flip-flopped double-digit outcomes with the Las Vegas Aces, the team they swept in last year's title in the Wubble in Florida. On Tuesday, the final was 96-80, to certainly more lopsided than you would expect for the defending champions. Seattle's defense so far, small sample, but it does rank 12th in defensive rating, and they allowed 48 paint points to the Aces, which... It's a Bill Lambeer team. They have Liz Cambage and Asia Wilson in the paint. But Las Vegas shot 54% as a team against Seattle. All right, coming up, we will have your starting lineups and tip-off here from Target Center between the Minnesota Lynx and the Seattle Storm. With those games against the Las Vegas Aces, the team that they swept en route to their fourth franchise championship in uh, the organization's history. Sloan Martin along with you here from Target Center. Let's take a look at our starting lineups beginning with the visiting Seattle Storm. They are sticking with this same uh, starting lineup. Or should I say, Katie Lou Samuelson is actually temporarily suspended. She's in the three versus three qualifying tournament for Team USA. She's off to Austria. That's taking place at the end of May. That's along with WNBA players Stephanie Dolson, Alicia Gray, Kelsey Plum. She's going to miss the next five to six games, and that's a little troublesome for Seattle. She had been averaging nine points per game in her third team in her third year in the WNBA. So it will be former Lynx player Stephanie Talbot stepping in at small forward uh, in the starting lineup for the Seattle Storm. Of course, you know uh, Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart. She was coming off a 26.11 rebound performance against the Las Vegas Aces in two games. 27 points per game for her, shooting 48% from the field. Also 12 rebounds, but her minutes have been quite high. Uh, 36 against the Aces most recently. Jewel Lloyd, fantastic outing for her, especially in the second half. 15 of her 17 points coming uh, in the second frame against the Aces. She's averaging almost 20 points per game this season as well. And it'll be interesting to see what Sue Bird does in this game. Head coach Dan Hughes talked about he should have set more screens for her gotten her more involved in the action because she was held scoreless for the first time since August 2014 she did have five assists though just two shot attempts and for the Minnesota Lynx Sylvia Fowles was the first name mentioned by coach Hughes she's had double doubles in back-to-back -back games 26 and 11 against the New York Liberty she was 11 for 17 from the field the rest of the Lynx Shot just 30%. She's averaging a team high 18 and a half points per game. Demiris Dantas in the lineup as well at the four. She will have a tough task ahead of her, likely getting that assignment against Brianna Stewart. And Kayla McBride, uh, new to Minnesota, has had at least 15 points in back-to-back -back games. And then wrapping that up is Ariel Powers, her second game as a link. She had five points, struggled from the field, going two for 11 but did also have four rebounds and four assists. And wrapping up, it is Bridget Carlton. And uh, she so far is uh, averaging two points per game, two for eight from the field. So certainly the coaching staff will look to get her more involved offensively too. 
Minnesota continues to be without 2019 Rookie of the Year Nafisa Collier. She came back from France playing overseas this week, but she's not quite through those health and safety protocols just yet. The WNBA guidelines require six consecutive negative COVID tests, so it's possible that she could be uh, into the lineup coming up the very next game for Minnesota. They do have a little bit of a gap. They're not playing until Friday May 28th against the Seattle Storm, while the Storm have two games in between before a rematch between these two teams. But it was clear from the pregame comments from Storm head coach Dan Hughes how much the focus is on Sylvia Fowles and how much is going to be on the shoulders of the 21-year-old Ezzy Magbegor, a member of the Australian national team, they are going to be getting Mercedes Russell back into the lineup, the 6'6 center out of Tennessee. But she is another player who is just returning from overseas. She played in Turkey. She has at least a shoot around under her belt. Hughes says she could be used today. In fact, he likely will just because of the having Sylvia Fowles on the floor. But it will be a very tough matchup for whoever is guarding Fowles. The Storm with it to start, and Sue Bird looking to start things off. As I mentioned, just two shot attempts in their most recent game against the Aces. Looking into the post for fouls, and they immediately start things off with a three-point play. You have to love to see that as a Lynx fan, where you have a new player in Ariel Powers, just her third game with Minnesota being able to thread the pass perfectly for where a post like Fowles is gonna want that ball and be able to score. Rebound to Mag Begore. Stewart looking to post up against Carlton. Mag Begore can shoot from outside, decides against it that time. Here is Talbot, the former member of the Minnesota Lynx in 2019. She decided to sit out, of course, COVID complications. Being an Australian native, did not play in the Wubble in 2020, but started 10 games for Minnesota in 2019. And there she forces a turnover against Powers. Picked off by Fowles and then stolen right back by Bird, just like I'm sure she drew it up. Here is Lloyd, deep corner three, it is good. Jewel Lloyd this season shooting 39% from long range. Has a strong established role on this reigning championship team. John just looking to post up against her. There's that fade away that she absolutely nails. It is her signature move and she had all the time in order to establish where she wanted that ball. Picked off by McBride. No advantage here for Minnesota. And they're gonna slow things down. Dantas, 4-3, answers right back against the Storm. Dantas this year, a little bit slow out of the game, has been 2 for 11 from beyond the arc heading into this game. But she is one of the strongest shooting bigs you will find. Lob inside to Stewart, broken up. The combination of Carlton and Dantas forcing the turnover. Powers drives hard, can't get the finish, but that is exactly her game where she can just put her head down and attack. This is going to be a foul on Kayla McBride. We saw Kayla pick up that steal a couple plays ago. There's another look at that foul. Stephanie Talbot can't knock down the three from the wing. And a quick outlet from Dantas. And a foul away from the ball against Seattle. And that's going to go against Ezzie Magbegor, and that's going to 
bring in Candace Dupree. That was something Dan Hughes talked about pregame where he said that he wants to get their new free agent acquisition in Candace Dupree, who entered the season fifth all time in WNBA scoring. But when you're facing Liz Cambage and Sylvia Fowles, it's just not quite the best matchup for her. Some trouble here for Minnesota. Fowles is going to try and rescue the situation, and she will draw another trip to the free throw line. What almost was a turnover ends up in another trip for Fowles. This season, six for 10 from the free throw line. Another big focus for Seattle against the Minnesota Lynx as you hear the frustration from Fowles there. She's missed back-to-back -back free throws and a couple opportunities here early. Was that he really wants to avoid Brianna Stewart having to guard her and her being in a situation where she might be more likely to get into foul trouble. So it's going to be very important for Dupree, for Magbagor, and also for Russell. And they're going to turn that over. Dupree looks like a miscommunication with Brianna Stewart. It just sails out of bounds. Minnesota with the five-point lead. Carlton has burn on her. McBride can't get free of Lloyd. Eight on the shot clock for the Lynx. McBride. And a rebound to Bird. Lynx, their bench and the fans looking for a traveling violation there. And Stewart cannot knock down the three. That was her first shot attempt. And again, coming into today in at least two games, averaging 27 and 12 as fouls just overpowers Stewart. And it looks like Stewart might have taken an elbow or a shoulder to the chest. Sylvia Fowles should instill fear in anyone who comes into the paint, whether she's going up against them or not, as there's a foul underneath the basket with Stewart driving to the rim. Super coming to take it out, 14 on the shot clock. The Lynx looking to prevent those backdoor cuts by Stewart to Dupree, knocking down her signature mid-range jump shot. She is the WNBA leader in two-point baskets, and you it's just fun to see this player in Dupree, now in her 16th season out of Temple, who is still knocking down 16, 17-foot jumpers because a lot of basketball has gone away from that, but not her, and she hits them at an extremely high rate. Sylvia Fowles just going to work in the post. She's got seven points already, three for three from the floor. Stewart flips it up, and that's going to bounce out. More than midway through the first quarter here is McBride trying to thread the needle. It's stolen by Lloyd. It's a three on two for Seattle. Bird will knock down the three. So she is able to get on the board early for her first points today. Coming off a game in which she was kept scoreless for the first time since the 2014 season. There is Powers with another mid-range jet. Shot goes up by Lloyd, and she knocks it down. That was a nice sounding splash, and still here at Target Center. There are capacity restrictions, and you can really hear what it sounds like going right into the rim, and that was a nice shot by Lloyd. Backdoor cut by Carlton. She loses it back-to-back -back turnovers for Minnesota, and Bird pushing fast. And another uncharacteristic turnover by the Seattle Storm. That's two passes that we've seen really kind of tossed out of bounds.
a three-point lead for the Minnesota Lynx here early, but they've really focused on scoring inside the paint, leading the storm in that category 6-0. Overall, Minnesota 6 for 8 from the floor. Tamir Stonches and Sylvia Fowles a combined 5 for 5. So looking to score through that front court. And we know that Seattle is coming off a game in which they allowed 48 paint points against the Las Vegas Aces. So certainly it's got to be a point of emphasis for Cheryl Reeve and her staff. As Crystal Dangerfield, her first time into the game off the bench, she was held scoreless in 17 minutes in the last game of loss against the New York Liberty. And that was surprising from the 2020 Rookie of the Year just because, well, her first season, she scored in double figures all but two games. That was her first time not in the starting lineup. Here is Shepard, who has stopped to get her own rebound. And she is on the board. Jessica Shepard played just five minutes in the first game. Some fans were worried because she was over on the bike trying to keep her knees warm. She, of course, had a really devastating knee injury six games into her rookie season in 2019, missed all of last year as well. But head coach Cheryl Reeve says that she should have used Shepard more, especially in that opener against the Phoenix Mercury. She said that she just got so tied up trying to keep Sylvia Fowles on the floor with the heavy minutes that Brittany Griner was playing that it just got away from her. So in the last game against New York, she played 19 minutes at 12.6 rebounds, three assists, which is a fantastic game for Jessica Shepard. Driving is Jordan Canada, difficult shot, rebound to Shepard on the weak side. Into the post for Dauntus. She is liking this matchup, and she draws the foul. Should be going against Kennedy Burke. And Burke in her third year out of UCLA. Seattle coach Jan Hughes saying that she was going to be playing more minutes today. Seattle without Katie Lou Samuelson. That meant more minutes and a starting spot for Stephanie Talbot at the three. And then Kennedy Burke, someone who is also going to be the beneficiary of Samuelson's absence. Rachel Bannum in for Bridget Carlton. And Donchus, two for two. Boyd looking for another three, and she's got it. Wide open, the Lynx losing her beyond the three-point arc. Dantas losing her dribble, 17 on the shot clock for the Lynx. Bantam in a tough spot. Lloyd almost forces a turnover. It's going to stay right here. And Sylvia Faust had to check back in for Dantas. Lloyd has been off to a great start defensively as well, averaging two steals per game in their first two contests. She had three, in fact, against Seattle. Or excuse me, against uh, the Las Vegas Aces, their second matchup. Three on the shot clock for Dangerfield to make some magic happen, and she comes through. A floater right in the middle of the paint. Such a strong play for her where she is able to not only uh, shoot as a spot-up shooter, but also drive that floater very effective for her. Seattle trying to close the gap. A minute and a half left in this first quarter. Canada also a tenacious defender against Dangerfield. Lob inside. It is Sylvia Fowles very patient with that pump fake. Brianna Stewart out of the picture. Stewart a fantastic shot like blocker. Sylvia Fowles has no problem waiting for her to fly through. Fowles today up to nine points. She's a perfect four for four. And Minnesota comes away with the ball under a minute left. Dangerfield lobbing again to Fowles. She's got Dupree one-on-one. -on -one and she's going to take it outside the paint and go five for five in this first quarter. She's got 11 points already. A 
foul is going to go against Shepard trying to deflect that pass intended for Stewart. But from hearing it from Coach Hughes pregame, this was exactly the scenario he was concerned about, that Sylvia Fowles and the way she's been playing in the first two games this season was cause for alarm for him, especially when you have Mercedes Russell, number two in white, who's just checked in and really not quite up to speed. He said they have different terminology for some things uh, that she would be familiar with from her previous experience in Seattle. So it's tough. Kayla McBride knows exactly how difficult it is to be able to come right into a game, basically off the plane from overseas, and join your squad. 20 seconds left for Seattle. It's a 10 point contest at this point. Minnesota has had a comfortable lead here in the first 10 minutes. Russell the high screen and they're gonna whistle her for a foul. That is something that Cheryl Reeve has talked about a lot. Is it a focus by the referees, it appears league wide, about illegal screens where you sneak out a shoulder, you sneak out a knee. Here is Shepard at the buzzer, just misses. And it's a 10 point lead for the Minnesota Lynx heading into the second quarter, trying to avoid an 0 3 start on their home court. After the first quarter, it is a 10 point lead for the Minnesota Lynx over the 1 and 1 defending champion Seattle Storm. Things in large part to Sylvia Fowles, who has 11 points, two steals, and is a perfect 5 for 5 from the floor. That did also include a jump shot. It hasn't just been Gimme's right at the rim, but she has been getting the ball in really advantageous positions. Here is Powers, who draws the foul. Strong play off a curl. Now it's interesting, looking at the box score, Sylvia Fowles has zero rebounds, which seems very unlike her. She, of course, is the uh, all-time WNBA leader in rebounds, and she's, in fact, one defensive rebound away from first all-time. She's currently tied with Lisa Leslie at 2,425. But part of that could be because Minnesota is just not missing many shots. 69% they shot in the first quarter, 11 for 16, while Seattle still a respectable 43%. And of course, we're talking uh, small samples here, but at least in the first two games, Seattle is 11th in the league, allowing teams to shoot 48% against them. Now in large part, and that's why we talk about it only being two games. It came against the Las Vegas Aces, who scored 48 points in the paint. That's exactly how they want to play. So that, of course, can't improve. Here is Burke trying to go coast to coast. That's off the back rim. Burke going to work again against Powers. I think Powers got a hand in there, but another opportunity. Boy. Back into the game, she did not sit in the first quarter, hit two threes, but off the mark that time. Fowles will hand it off to Powers. Canada really staying with her, but Powers has that advantage physically. Offensive rebound to Sill, and she will lose it. Another turnover for the Storm. They've had some uncharacteristic ones. A couple passes that have been nowhere close to a teammate. That time just a mistake off the hands of Jewel Lloyd. But that is their eighth. Sue Bird bringing a Stewart checking back in. Stewart only got a short break in the first quarter. Here's Fowles going to work again against the more experienced Russell as opposed to the 21-year-old Magpagor. Dangerfield slices in and it drops in. Dangerfield already three for three from the floor. She's got six points coming off a scoreless outing against the Liberty, her first time coming off the bench. Russell, simple jump shot, does not fall. The Seattle Storm also waiting on the services of Epiphany Prince. She played on the same team as Mercedes Russell. She should be ready to go against Dallas on Saturday. 
but she just needed an extra day coming back from Turkey, playing on the same team as Russell. Powers in a really tough spot, and it's jump ball. It'll be between Powers and Burke. Burke playing her first two seasons at Indiana. Powers, a little too strong there. Sue Burke chases it down. The reverse layup is good. She was looking for a foul there, but beautiful looking play, uh, play from Sue Bird now in her 18th season. Banna, lots of contact that will fall off the side of the rim. Rebound to Burke. Bird into Stewart. That was knocked away by fouls. Staying right here with eight minutes on the clock. Rachel Bannum taking a seat for Minnesota, coming in Kayla McBride. Burke being guarded by Shepard. 15 on the shot clock for the Storm. Here is Canada, who is fouled by Dangerfield on the jump shot. So free throws coming up here for the fourth year point guard where she shoots 75% for her career. Canada is really an interesting study when you look at players and just how exclusive this league is, how few roster spots there are. And think about her longevity, at least so far, at the point guard position where she really doesn't take a whole lot of jump shots. She really is able to use her speed to get into the paint, to dish out to teammates. A great passing point guard, but certainly lacking when it comes to that three-point range as well, which I did see her practicing quite a bit uh, during warm-ups with the coach, just putting up three after three after three. But much different doing it in a game. Short corner shot for fouls is good. And Sylvia is six for seven. She's got 13 points. Sylvia Fowles came into this season expected to be on a minute's limit. Sue Bird, that one is comes off a little bit flat. But she has been playing completely healthy basketball. Fowles. Never, uh, had never missed a game during her time with Minnesota. Only played seven last year. Minnesota was 5-1 and one in the wobble when she was healthy. But she was dealing with a right calf in uh, injury. But the way it looks right now can't be affecting her too much. That's the ninth turnover for the Storm. Carlton and Natalie Achanwa check into the game. And for Achanwa, her first time on the floor, she didn't play against the New York Liberty with a knee injury. She was listed as questionable before the game and then officially designated available. So we'll see what her impact is able to be. Is that shot good to give Minnesota a 13-point cushion? Dangerfield up to eight points. She's four for five. And Minnesota, by the way, has only attempted three threes as Canada is able to work her way into the paint. Dantas able to pick up that ball. Good timing. The cut by Carlton. Dantas to Carlton for two to extend the lead back up. Brianna Stewart. Good close out there by Carlton. She will attack against two Lynx players, and that doesn't go. Stewart 0 for 4, and she has not scored. A timeout called on the floor. We'll be back. Lynx and Storm. We are the Minnesota. Almost midway through the second quarter here at Target Center. Minnesota still shooting above 60%. And they're outscoring Seattle in the paint 20 to 4. Sylvia Fowles already with 13 points. 
Here is McBride launching 4-3. That rims out rebound to the former Lynx, Stephanie Talbot. Talbot steps into that jump shot and Chonwa with the rebound. Seattle shooting under 35%. That hasn't recovered much from the first quarter. It actually has gone down a bit. They've been shooting respectfully, but have not been able to slow Minnesota, especially getting into the paint. Here is Dangerfield. She will turn it over. Stewart is just going to go all the way, and that is her first basket. One for five this game so far. Both of those games coming against the Aces, but Stewart 27 and 12 on average between them. Chonwa looking for her former Notre Dame teammate backdoor, finds Carlton instead. Five on the shot clock for Carlton. It is Dantes looking for another three rebound to Lloyd. As he Magbagor back into the game. She started, but a lot of minutes taken by Dupree and Russell as well, trying to find some way to slow down Sylvia Fowles, but a chance to get Magbagor back to work in the paint against Chandwa. Dangerfield will put up a three and drain it. 11 points. She is the second Lynx player in double figures. Five for six from the floor. No members of the Storm yet in double figures. Stewart, double team comes perfectly timed by Demiris Dantes, not picking up a foul either. Perfectly executed defense. Chanwa facing up, driving, and she will be stopped by Magbagor. Multiple substitutions, it is Dupree for the Storm. Shepard, Powers, and Fouls for Minnesota. So they were able to maintain this cushion with basically their reserves. Currently up 14, and they have maintained a significant mar margin really since the outset as Fouls, or rather Powers, is fouled, should be on Talbot. Ariel Powers, her third game as a member of the Minnesota Lynx. In 27 minutes against the Liberty, had five points, two for 11 shooting. She had a really strong debut against the Mercury. But it really is about finding this identity, and it's very much a work in progress. Certainly there's lots of people who pick the Seattle Storm and the Las Vegas Aces to meet again in the WNBA Finals like they did in the Wubble. But Minnesota, seen by many, is, is kind of a sleeper pick because of the way they've drafted and because of those free agent acquisitions. But head coach Cheryl Reeves says she doesn't even see this as a, a one-year process. This is really something that they're developing and building around young players like Nafisa Collier and Crystal Dangerfield. And still young, those free agent additions in Powers and McBride, along with Sylvia Fowles, an all-time great. And Powers will travel that time, giving it back to the Storm. 18 turnovers combined between these two teams, Minnesota with eight. It's a tough play for Powers because it looked like she had Talbot turned around in a, a good look at the basket. Dupree can't hit from the mid-range there. Shepard, 13 on the shot clock, looks back door, poked away by Stewart. It's got to be somewhat intimidating, even for these experienced athletes, to have Stewart around. She's trying to make an impact. We are. Crystal Dangerfield has seven points for Minnesota in this second quarter, and the Lynx have their largest lead of the game. Here is McBride, and she will add more. McBride, one for three today, and her first bucket of the game. 
It's surprising to see Seattle in another significant deficit again. Coming off a 96 to 80 loss. Candace Dupree gonna try and eat into it. But approaching halftime, it has been all links in this first half, scoring in the paint. 20 to six, they're outscoring the Storm in that category. Here is Fouls. She'll kick out of that double team. Powers down low into Carlton. Good defense and recovery by the Storm. Under two minutes to go before halftime. And here is Dupree, a long two, rebound to Fouls. She's the leading scorer with 13 points. That was her third rebound as well. And a blocking foul is going to go against Talbot. Powers for much of this game has really not been looking for her jump shot. It has been to drive, to use her physical advantage. I talked earlier on about really no one wants to take any kind of contact from Sylvia Fowles. I think you're going to be feeling that for a couple more possessions when you're doing it over and over again. But I would put Powers in that category too. She is so strong and so physical. It's not just her energy and her, I would call it a vivacious personality that has made her so attractive to Minnesota when they were basically recruiting her to come here, got her her own personalized controller. She is a very passionate gamer and really advocates for more women being prominent within the world of gaming. And she is a streamer as well. But it's plays like that that uh, got her a trip to the free throw line where I think that's a pretty attractive thing in a player where you can just mow down pretty much anyone at that two or that three position. Here is Fowles at the high post. She's got Stewart on her. And Fowles going to the post move, and she leaves it short. Burke almost losing it out of bounds, has to pick up her dribble. 10 on the shot clock with a minute left. Here is Lloyd, who's been quieter in this second quarter. And she scores. She's got 11, the first in double figures for the Seattle Storm. She's four for seven overall. Does have three threes. She came out really hot for the defending champions, but has not found those same shot opportunities in the second quarter. From that last time out, she hadn't scored in the second. Powers at the free throw line once more. She's four for six from there today. And that's a total you'd be pretty happy with for an entire game. Getting yourself eight free throws. And she's going to have that just in the first half. And going along with five assists, three rebounds. But that is what has been working for the Minnesota Lynx against the Storm. Attacking into the paint, getting it into fouls being able to drive from the perimeter. Boy, that by the double team from Fowles who recovers back over to Dupree. Bird by herself and she will knock down her second three today. She is up to eight points. Fowles has Burke guarding her looking back door. Dangerfield able to save the possession and somehow gets that up and in. I'm looking at Crystal Dangerfield trying to put up a shot in the paint against 5'9 Sue Bird with Brianna Stewart not far away, and she was still able to net it. Stewart on the other side. That's her second bucket. She's got four. Three seconds left for Shepard, who takes a dribble, collects herself, but she will not knock down that shot. A 48 to 33 lead at halftime. More coming up here on NBA TV. The telecast of WNBA Enterprises may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise used in any form without the express written consent of WNBA Enterprises. 
The Minnesota Lynx with a 48 to 33 advantage at the half. Here's Lynx assistant coach Planet Pearson. And coach, I want to ask about the focus in the paint. You have Sylvia Fowles and then as well as Crystal Dangerfield and Ariel Powers attacking. How much of that was a focus pregame to really try and score in the paint? It's always a focus for us to get into the paint. Um, we think if we get into the inside in the paint, we'll collapse their defense and we'll be able to spray the ball around and find shooters. We're having so much success in doing that and taking the shot inside. Now, how to prevent Brianna Stewart from getting hot, for example, and, and what has worked well against her in the first half, only four points right now uh, through 20 minutes? Um, I just think our focus, and we're playing team defense. Um, every, we know that she's a great player and she's just not going to score by herself. Um, we're going to have to all defend her by our, by ourselves and together, and that's what we're doing. We're just focusing on playing team defense and not letting her get hot, and we've done good this, this thus far, and we're going to continue on. All right, Lynx assistant coach, Planet Pearson, thanks so much for the time. Thank you. Minnesota has led by as many as 19 points in this game, and even though Minnesota has been shooting exceptionally well, after the first quarter, it was 69%, and it feels strange to say it went down after the second quarter to 53%. So I'm interested to see how much of that is maintained, that scoring efficiency. You heard that focus about scoring in the paint from assistant coach Planet Pearson. Of course, this is a team against Seattle that even though it's a team uh, that they face in the Las Vegas Aces that has Liz Cambage, that has Asia Wilson, as you see, some highlights from the first half. An example there from Dangerfield getting into the paint. Sylvia Fowle scoring there as well. Definitely not a matchup that Seattle prefers to have Brianna Stewart down there guarding against Sylvia Fowles. But Dangerfield and Fowles led the way with 13 points apiece. Another bucket in the paint for Bridget Carlton. A really well-timed backdoor cut. So as you heard from Coach Pearson, definitely working well but I just don't know how much Seattle could continue to struggle in this way with Brianna Stewart shooting two for seven from the floor 0 for three from long range and Jewel Lloyd had just two points of her 11 total in the second quarter was quite quiet in that second frame but against uh, Las Vegas most recently she scored 15 of her 17 points in the second half and then we also have the brief history of this 2021 season where the Minnesota Lynx in each of those first two games, a 10 point quarter. So there have been times where they have very much cooled off and have not been able to recover offensively. Same starters on the floor for both teams. And that includes Ezzy Magbagor who only played uh, fewer than four minutes in that first half and she has a very tough assignment at just 21 years old guarding Sylvia Fowles who has picked up nearly every accolade possible that shot by McBride too short Seattle depended a lot on switching between Dupree Russell who's playing in her first game this season and even Brianna Stewart guarding Fowles in the post as well Extra pass to Sue Bird. Perhaps a pass to herself. I'm just I'm just gonna say that's an assist because I think she's that experienced to have planned it out. I was thinking when she shot from the corner that uh, she was definitely behind the backboard, at least from my vantage point at around uh, midcourt. I'm just gonna say that was totally planned. As Sylvia Fowles is going to the line to shoot two. And here's another uh, look at that fouls play you see three white jerseys around her just the power the footwork the innate ability around the post it's it's still after all these years magnificent to watch and we can't take these things for granted we can't take for granted having sue bird on the floor the sixth player ever in WNBA history to appear in a game after 40. Second in wins behind Lindsey Whalen, whose number is hanging up here in Target Center, her number 13. And the same goes for Sylvia Fowles in her 14th year. That's going to be a foul against Ariel Powers, her first. Powers really made her living at the free throw line in the first half. 
Six for eight from there as Stewart will line up and knock down a three. We know the Seattle team shoots the three well. 37% as a team, their first two games as fouls. Trying to muscle that one up, not the second time either, and Bird with the long rebound. Bird's gonna slow things down with 15 on the shot clock. Magba Gore, she'll take that, but that time it's left short. Magba Gore, one for three coming into this game from long range, so she's open to it, but still expanding that part of her game. Lloyd trying to split defenders, and she will travel. It is, again, another example of uh, running into Sylvia Fowles. Usually doesn't work. Something I pointed out in the first half, and another look at that. <laughs> I chuckled just because you see Fowles be a brick wall. There she comes in for the help defense, and that's what she's great at doing. There's so much uh, intelligence she has on the defensive side of the ball, but it is also just her strength. Here's Dangerfield, had a fantastic first half, 13 points for her. That is only her second miss today. Stewart, stopped by Dantas. And poked away and stolen by Dantas. Up ahead to Dangerfield, who is fouled. The Lynx have been so active defensively and that has to be pleasing to the Lynx coaching staff. Head coach Cheryl Reeve did not mince words. As you see, that pass poked away in that two-player game with Bird and Stewart. She really said against the New York Liberty, a team that scored 86 points against them, she said, I don't think our defense really made anything difficult for them. She said, this is about effort, and she's not seeing it. She said, it's either conditioning or teams are outworking us, and the defensive effort has been so strong today. And there's a great move by Ariel Powers. You have to respect her ability to drive hard to the basket. So when she pulls up on a dime like that, you're really gonna have the defender out of the picture. Another tipped ball. Things that aren't in the box score, but certainly the coaching staff is keeping track of that. Along the baseline, it was Lloyd. And another uncharacteristic turnover for the Seattle Storm, forced by Minnesota and deep in the shot clock as well. McBride was the player who was able to get her hand in on that possession. And pregame, Cheryl Reeves says that she's been really, really impressed with how McBride has played defense. She has she says she has a great will about her. McBride guarding Diana Tarasi forced her to struggle from the floor. As Sue Bird gets the interception. Lloyd will knock down the three. And that is her fourth today. And she's got 14. Tied for the game high with Faust. Powers in trouble along the baseline, trying to knock it off a defender, it looked like, unsuccessfully. Magba Gore by herself for the easy bucket. Jess Shepard set to check in for the Lynx. And a timeout called on the floor, approaching the midway point of the third quarter. Minnesota holding on to its lead still. to three run to begin the third quarter for the Seattle Storm. They've trailed by as many as 19 points in this game, coming off a 16-point loss to the Las Vegas Aces and wanting to avoid a one and two start this season and now making the moves possibly to eat deeper into this deficit. Matt Begore is going to attack right at uh, Shepard. Stewart not able to get the offensive rebound to go. Dangerfield right into the paint, doing exactly what she and the rest of the Minnesota Lynx have done in the first half, pretty much at will, being able to attack into the paint from the outside. Talbot and Magbagor, Stewart, long three. That bounces out, and Stewart 
She's got seven points, three in this half so far. She's one for four from long range, three for 10 overall. Dangerfield one-on-one -on -one against Bird, and she stopped a veteran play by Sue Bird. That was something else that uh, head coach Cheryl Reeves said pregame is that they felt like they had an advantage in the backcourt. And maybe this is an example where you feel like the speed of Dangerfield, why they wanted her to be able to uh, kind of isolate against her in the corner uh, would work in the Lynx's favor. But I think you just see that veteran savvy from Sue Bird. She knew it was coming. She knew there was no one around her and where Dangerfield was going. And she was able to track the ball and draw a jump ball. And another jump ball. And this will be McBride and Lloyd. And it will stay here with the Lynx. Dangerfield waiting for that screen from Dantes. A shot just inside the free throw line won't fall and a rebound to Talbot. Stewart right at Carlton who forces her to miss. Carlton was on the run but was able to establish enough position to get Stewart to miss that shot. Minnesota has been fantastic today in recovering defensively and you can see on the replay how Carlton was able to not pick up the foul because she jumped straight up into Stewart to try and affect that shot. From the outside, it is Bird for three. She's got 13 now and three three-pointers. Shepard looking long range. Off back iron, staying here though. McBride, she's gonna try now and she will drain it. McBride, her second three today and she's up to six points. Boyd will not knock down that shot. It looked like Dangerfield went underneath that screen. Maybe a little bit risky against Lloyd who in this game has four three-pointers of her team's eight. Here's Don just going to work in the post and there is that fade away again. This time it doesn't fall. She got an earlier bucket today with that exact move, her signature. And a turnover for Seattle, another one where a teammate was really nowhere close. Sylvia Fowles returning it to the game. Jessica Shepard going to the bench in this case, and Stephanie Talbot as Magbagor to the bench for Seattle. Kennedy Burke and Candace Dupree, their replacements. Shepard looking back door, danger field, completes the layup, great communication there. And you love to see that if you're a Lynx fan with Jessica Shepard, who has played limited games. This is just her ninth game in her Lynx career. She didn't play with Crystal Dangerfield all of last year because she didn't play because of her lingering knee injury from uh, early on in the 2019 season. But that kind of communication so early in the season is a really fun thing to see. Here's Jordan Canada. The foul is on Dangerfield. And she has two, no one else from Minnesota. Has more than one. For Seattle, something to watch. Stephanie Talbot, a starter with Katie Lou Samuelson in Austria for the three on three qualifying for Team USA. Uh, she's gonna miss the next five to six games. Talbot starting in her spot. She's got three as well as Magbagor. Stewart trying to force a turnover, another backdoor cut. Carlton almost there to save it but it will be turnover number 11 for the Lynx. Dupree with it at the top of the paint. Stewart being patient. Dupree, that's her shot just inside the three-point line and she knocks down another long two. We talked about it in the first quarter, but I think it's still fun to see. 
That was a second assist for Brianna Stewart. McBride, free throw line jump shot, too long, rebound to Dupree. Canada, not gonna look for that shot along the perimeter. This time she drives and it goes out of bounds. And that's something that's gonna have to, I think, come with the development of her game. If it was Jewel Lloyd, Sue Bird, I think that would have been a three flying, but it's Canada who's quite reserved when it comes to those three point attempts for her career. 17%, that's 19 for 111. She's 0 for 2 uh, coming into this game. Fouls double teamed. Canada being aggressive defensively, getting her hand on the ball. Beautiful pass, danger field to Shepard. I don't even think she saw her teammate before dumping it off for an assist. Here is Lloyd attacking, and she won't be stopped. Seattle head coach Dan Hughes getting off of his seat and applauding that basket. It's a nine-point game. Minnesota has led by as many as 19 points. And Jewel Lloyd, who's averaging two steals per game, had three, their most recent one, feeds it to Stewart to score in stride. Brianna Stewart up to nine points, four for 12 shooting, but I talked at halftime about how that's something to watch. She is someone who, even though they're coming off a 16 point loss, I think that's even more motivation for the defending champions to avoid a one and two start. Dangerfield continues her fantastic play. She's got 20 points, her second three tonight. And that's an offensive foul against the Seattle Storm that have really not been able to get things going in this game. We're almost in the fourth quarter at this point. Ariel Powers stepping in. But Crystal Dangerfield has been the story of this game so far. 20 points in 19 minutes off the bench, coming off a scoreless outing in which she was 0 for 7. She came off the bench. A new situation for the 2020 Rookie of the Year. One more pass here is Shepard for three. That is left short. And we'll stay here with Minnesota. Uh, 11 on the shot clock. The Lynx, especially in their season opening loss against the Phoenix Mercury, had really great looks off of baseline inbounds. Now five seconds left for Carlton. That's knocked away. Good poke by Burke to get it to Lloyd. Stewart is challenged at the rim by Powers, but she'll be shooting too. I was holding my breath there for a moment for Powers because she has been great blocking shots. A team high two per game, and again, just two games to start. But she had one against Phoenix that along the perimeter, I thought her hand would have been stinging by how hard she blocked the ball away. And she joked uh, on Twitter afterwards that she said, I can hear Coach Reeve saying you're late, so I better get that block. And I thought she was going to do it right there against Stewart. I think that would have been uh, a pretty proud one to get against the, uh, the former MVP. Dangerfield with six seconds left just off the hands of Fowles. And that's just something you don't see very often. Fowles has one of the best hands you will see in this game. But it was right there, a great pass by Dangerfield. Here was Lloyd pushing, one second left. She goes all the way, and that will not go in. It is a 10-point lead for Minnesota heading into the fourth quarter here at Target Center. Crystal Dangerfield scored seven of her game-high 20 points in the third quarter. Minnesota able to maintain this double-digit lead heading into the final frame. They have led by as many as 19 points. There have been just two lead changes in this game coming very early on. It has been a struggle for the Storm as Minnesota has pounded the paint. 
and the Storm have not been able to recover or combat that with their own long range shooting. Here is Burke, and a rebound to Fouts. Fouls jumped out to 13 points after the first frame as Carlton attacks hard and fast and finishes. Seems like the Storm lost track of her driving to the rim, but that play indicative of how Minnesota has been so successful in this game, just attacking or throwing the ball into fouls. It has been one or the other the entire time. Here's a two on one. Dangerfield is good on the fast break and Minnesota wasting no time building this lead higher. Dupree setting the screen for Canada. And an offensive foul against the Storm. It's going to go on Candace Dupree. That is her first. And Ariel Powers kind of holding her chest. Dangerfield watching the off-ball action. Here is Dantas. Powers has Lloyd on her, and she travels. At least for the second time today, and you can see her reaction even practicing that move again. I think the Lynx have just been so eager to attack and drive in this game, and the opportunities have been there. They've come fairly easily. This is a Storm team that allowed 48 points in the paint to the Las Vegas Aces uh, earlier this week. And I think maybe she just got a little ahead of herself. Burke's gonna line one up again, and this time she will knock it down. And for Burke, that's her first score today, one for four overall. Powers resetting this offense. Fowles has Stewart on her, and she's stuffed by Burke. That's gotta be a highlight play for Burke to stop fouls like that as she is driving to the rim and on the other side, an easy two for Candace Dupree. Dangerfield fakes it against Canada, down into fouls and she finishes with the hook shot. Dangerfield has been great setting up her teammates as well. She's up to 22 points. She has five assists to go along with it. The Lynx have been tinkering with their starting lineup. Carlton into the starting lineup in the last two games. Dangerfield coming off the bench as she finds Carlton. A perfect timed cut right to the rim. The sixth assist for Dangerfield with her 22 points, and Carlton has six points herself. But the Lynx are going to have to tinker with it once more once the Fisa Collier is good to go. She had been playing overseas in France, was a late arrival. She has not practiced. She is still within the WNBA health and safety protocols, needing six consecutive negative COVID tests. Here's another look at that great feed from Dangerfield to Carlton. And Carlton has been the recipient of several of those really, really nice passes from her teammates. Vanna McBride, Shepard coming in. Here comes McBride up the floor. She scored at least 15 points in her first two outings as a member of the Minnesota Lynx. She has six to nine, two for six overall. Has been quite looking for her own shot. Here is Jauntis who misfires a rebound to Bird. Dupree going against Bannum in the post. The double team comes and here is Bird wide open. It falls in. Lots of friendly bounces here on the target center rims. Bird, her fourth three-pointer. She's got 16 points coming off her first scoreless game since August 2014. 
Bantam one on one against Bird. Eight on the shot clock. Bird almost drawing a jump ball there again. I think she definitely got a piece of that as Bantam was trying to draw contact and a whistle against Minnesota. That'll be on Carlton, and that's her second. Seattle Storm shooting 44% the links down, quote unquote, to 47.5%, but still maintaining this significant cushion as Bird will knock that down near the elbow. I was expecting them in the second half to come out firing from three, and I guess they have had those attempts. They're already up to 23 from beyond the arc, 10 for 23, and yet to still uh, be down in this game, although much more manageable. Carlton again back door. That time she can't complete it. And Seattle perhaps with an opportunity to cut deeper into this. And Canada will be going to the line. Timeout on the floor. Minnesota trying to hold on to its lead at home. Almost midway through the fourth quarter with Minnesota still holding on to this lead, which was once as high as 19. Jordan Canada at the line for the Storm where she scored five of her seven points tonight. Just off the screen, I see Sue Bird and Crystal Dangerfield having a discussion outside the three-point line, two UConn alums. And Canada continues to convert. She's seven for eight. Shepard facing up against Dupree. Well-timed pass into the post for Fowles doing work against Stewart, and she converts. Sylvia Fowles has 18 points. 13 came in the first quarter when the Lynx just pounded the ball inside. Seattle had no answer. She's the exact player to go to at this point when they need to ensure a win here to avoid falling to 0-3 to start the year. They're 0-2 right now, the first time since 2007. And an opportunity to get in the win column. Down low again into fouls. No answer. Sylvia Fowles continues to manhandle, frankly, the Seattle Storm. She's up to 20. The second Lynx player with at least 20. Crystal Dangerfield has 22 on 10 for 13 shooting. But Fowles, eight rebounds to go along with her 20 points as well. And this is after back-to-back -back games in which she's had double-doubles. It's been a very good start to the year. Her 14th. That makes it a two-possession game. So still time here for the Storm, especially with their ability to shoot the three, the scores that they have. Russell back in. Obviously not liking that matchup with Stewart and how Fowles was able to exploit it. And a foul will go against Minnesota. Looks like Dangerfield. A couple players going for that loose ball and that is on Dangerfield and that is her third in the bonus as well. So here's Canada, who continues to rack up the free throw. She's eight for nine. She has made every single free throw that the Storm have. And all but two attempts. That ball goes out of bounds, staying here with Minnesota. 15 on the shot clock. Carlton into fouls. Russell playing in her first game this season for the Storm as fouls trying to step her way through. It's waved off and foul going against the Storm and Mercedes Russell. 
looking at the storm. We're looking for a, a travel on that play. But they'll have it with 14 on the shot clock. Shepard has Stewart on her. And you see Canada just staring that down like a cornerback saw her from near the baseline eyeing that pass and she quickly goes coast to coast. She's got 13 points. And it is just a two point game. The Seattle Swarm quietly coming back into this one. And for insurance, Minnesota going back in to Sylvia Fouts. Seattle led very early on in this game by a single point. And depending on these free throws, they could potentially get that back on the next possession with still ample time left. And Seattle's done it by slowly racking up those threes racking up those fast break points for sure. They've got 18 of those compared to just six for Minnesota. And by limiting their turnovers in the second half. And Fowles goes 0 for 2. She has struggled from the free throw line today. 2 for 7. Seattle with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time since early on. Stewart will go to the line. Stewart today, she's got 11 on 5 for 14 shooting. Another look at that foul. And Sylvia was right there with the help defense. She doesn't put up much of a protest to the referees. Stewart for her career, an 83% shooter. Came into this game after back-to-back -back against the Las Vegas Aces, averaging 27 and 12. Well, she's the kind of player you can see maintaining a kind of pace like that even early on, and she is coming up big here down the stretch. Dangerfield patient, working her way. She can't hit off glass. Bird looking for an advantage. She finds Lloyd for three. It is good. And the Seattle Storm with the lead. 19 points for Jewel Lloyd. Five three-pointers. And a very opportune one there here late in the fourth. McBride trying to quiet things down. She cannot connect. And now Sue Bird slowing things down as Seattle Crawling back into this and another easy bucket, this time from Mercedes Russell. 28 bench points for the Seattle Storm and a timeout called on the floor. 2.26 left Seattle all of a sudden with its own lead. A 13-0 run has the Seattle Storm in front for the first time since it was 3-2. About a minute and 15 seconds into this game. They have 11 three-pointers as a team compared to five for Minnesota, and it has been a slow and methodical comeback. Currently in the midst, though, of a very strong run. Outscoring the Lynx in this quarter, 27 to 12. Dantas looking for a big three. Rebound chased down by Canada. Lloyd hitting a big three before that timeout. He's got five tonight. Between the legs, driving, trying to finish over fouls, and she does. Really impressive by Lloyd. She's got 21 points. The team high for the Storm. This week against Las Vegas had 15 for 17 in the second half. Dangerfield needed that one. Minnesota down now by their largest deficit of the game. A very quick turnaround. Foul is going to go against Ariel Powers. Oh, 
There's still time left with 1.35 to go. Here's another look at that foul. Powers trying to poke it away, but certainly too physical there. And here comes Canada, where she is 9 for 10 from the free throw line. She's got 14 points overall. So there is still time for Minnesota with 1.35 left, but they have to be feeling like this fourth quarter really slipped away from them. Dangerfield directing this offense. Has Bird on her midway through the shot clock. She drives, finds Carlton. Carlton, a difficult assignment driving against Stewart, but she is able to draw the foul. So here is Carlton at the line where for her career, 64% shooter, a big one there for the third year Canadian. Free throws pretty even. 19 attempts for Minnesota, 16 for the Seattle Storm. And here is Canada. And the Storm in a position to eat as much clock as possible, but Lloyd sees an opportunity. She saw that lane and she was not gonna slow up there. So Lloyd, who's a near 90% shooter for her career, is now gonna step to the line. She leads the Storm with 21 points. She had just two in the second quarter, but has really helped propel this comeback. Seattle again down by as many as 19 points. And the Lynx are going to call a timeout with 1.06 left. Minnesota trailing 86 to 77. You just can't be said enough what a turnaround this has been for the Seattle Storm, who looked quite uncharacteristic, not just in that 16 point loss to the Las Vegas Aces, who credit to the Aces, they're a team who could return to the finals. Um, but we heard from Dan Hughes post game, who said we really didn't sustain our energy. And Brianna Stewart said after the game that it's gonna take time and patience they feel like they're starting from scratch a little bit. She said they're excited about the group that they have. There's no concerns in the second game of the season, but it felt like the problems that were presented against the Las Vegas Aces surfaced again here, where it was another team in the Lynx scoring in the paint at will and really stopping the storm, especially their three-point attack in the first half. But that has been reversed, especially here in the fourth quarter. Very strong effort by the Storm as Carlton earns herself a trip to the free throw line. The Storm outscoring Minnesota 33 to 14. 33 points in this quarter alone. And that equals what they had in the entire first half. I will not reveal if my pause was due to doing the math or having to refresh my memory. It could have been both, but it was 13 in the first half. I have that now. And 33, excuse me, 33 in the first half and 33 in this fourth quarter. Just a marvelous comeback for the Seattle Storm. And it would have been, again here just early, but I think a little bit head scratching to see this Seattle Storm team, even if you know Brianna Stewart does say that she feels like they're starting from scratch a little bit. They lose Alicia Clark, they add Katie Lou Samuelson, they lose Natasha Howard, they bring in Candace Dupree. Every team's gonna have those new pieces. They have the late arrivals from Mercedes Russell and Epiphany Prince. But every team is gonna have those challenges off the miss 
stays here, four on the shot clock for Loy, looking to further seal this one. Beautiful off the glass, she can't get it to fall in. Dangerfield going coast to coast, rebound to Russell. And a very, very quiet target center. I think still like all of us, a little bit stunned at how this fourth quarter has gone. Sue Bird knocks down a three. Bird has been fantastic today. That is her fifth, and she's got 21 points. Minnesota, for example, at the timeout at the 532 mark of this fourth quarter had scored eight points in this quarter. They're being outscored 12 to eight at that point, almost midway through. And then at that last timeout with about a minute left, 33 to 14. In this, uh, in this situation. So the final is 90 to 78. Minnesota, which once led by 19 points, goes on to fall. A 37 point fourth quarter output dooms the Minnesota Lynx and they fall to 0 and 3 this season by the score of 90 to 78 against the defending champion, the Seattle Storm. This was uh, a remarkable comeback by the Storm, who trailed by as many as 19 points in the first half, but they did it by shooting 12 three pointers, or sh should say, making 12 of their 25 attempts from long range. And that's back to back games for the Minnesota Lynx, including the New York Liberty in their most recent loss, in which a team has netted 12 three pointers against them. They had two scores to reach over 23 points. Points. Sue Bird, you see there, was one of them. 23 points for her. She had five threes. Um, excuse me, 21 points for Bird. She had five threes. Jewel Lloyd with 23. She added five of her own. And Brianna Stewart was able to get up to 13 points herself. But she struggled overall. Five for 14. She did have seven assists. Minnesota was able to keep her in check. But Bird coming off the first scoreless outing since August 2014 was able to uplift this team. She was plus 20 for the game in 31 minutes. And again, Jewel Lloyd with 23 points herself with five of her team's 12 three-pointers. Uh, for Minnesota, two 20-point scores as well. It seemed like Minnesota, quite frankly, was going to be kind of coasting along to uh, a pretty affirmative victory before that 37-point output by the Seattle Storm. They were led by Crystal Dangerfield, 22 points off the bench. She was coming off. A scoreless outing uh, against the New York Liberty and really rebounded well, had uh, six assists as well. And uh, she was followed up by Sylvia Fowles, who had 20 points on nine for 14 shooting. Minnesota outscored 37 to 15 in the final frame, surrendering what was once a 19 point lead to fall to 0 and 3. The Seattle Storm improved to 2 and 1 this season. I'm Sloan Martin saying good, good night from Target Center. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will catch you soon here on NBA TV.